hello guys we're gonna um, solve this problem that um, hopefully it will help to uh, solve the pro problem so we have this um, gas turbine engine with heat and recuperation uh, that's a, re re a regenerator uh, we have a, what we call a gas fire turbine and this turbine the only thing is that it will is ma its size uh, to match the compressor capacity so this turbine will produce only the work that the compressor needs to work and uh, then after the reheat we have a second turbine that will produce the net power that this power plant produces we have a regenerator uh, here it's called a recuperator but this is a regenerator so air is drawn ambient air in the compressor which has a pressure ratio of 3.5 and an efficiency of 0.82 that's an isentropic efficiency uh, we preheat this in the recuperator in the regenerator and the pinch point for the recuperator the regenerator is 50 degrees it says this in the pin the pinpoint is in the warm side and hot side so that means that this difference is 50 degrees uh, the air enters the heater and the heater and uh, we don't know the airflow ratio but the airflow ratio is tuned such that the temperature at the exit of the heater and also the reheater is uh, 1082 uh, 1020 degrees celsius the gasified turbine has um, isentropic efficiency of 0.85 and if you notice we are not giving the uh, pressure ratio so the pressure ratio will be such that the power that this produces is matching with, is matched with this uh, turbine this compressor so after we expand the gasified turbine we reheat uh, the second combustor in the second combustor and again we don't know the airflow ratio but it's uh tuned in fashion that the outlet temperature is 1020 similar to what we have in the heater uh, then we have the air passing the turbine the power turbine and if you notice we don't know the mass flow rate but the mass flow rate is such that we have this power of 320 uh, HP the turbine efficiency is 0.81 we leave the state 7 and then this air is due to the recuperator uh, the, the burning fuel is diesel which has this heating value and we are asked to neglect all pressure losses in the in the cycle such that we can assume that P3 Then that P two equals P three equals P four and then P five equals P six and uh, P one equals P eight which this line is the same we have pressure row so equals P seven. We are gonna um, like model as a oil gas in this in the following video. So we are asked to find the efficiency of the engine and the heat and the rate at which uh, it consumes fuel. Then we are asked to find out the about the, the amount of fuel that is uh, burned. To find the effectiveness of the regenerator and find out the mass of the evaporator, the, the, the regenerator, and the total mass. Uh, these last two are just uh, 
algebraic operations so we are going to do it but they are going to be very fast so we are not going to uh, draw a diagram since we have our diagram here but we know that we uh, from this point if we do a first law analysis on the turbine we know that the network of the power turbine will be the mass flow of air times Okay, so we're not going to draw our um, diagram since we have one, but we can see that we uh, need to find out each state. So similar to what we did in the diesel, we're not going to get the states at this point, but we're going to indicate which what, what we need to do in order to find out each state. And then we're going to uh, do it in ease in the following video. Okay, so we have our state one. In state one, we know that P1 is equal to atmospheric pressure, or temperature one is equal to ambient pressure. With these two properties, we can find out each one, enthalpy and entropy one. That's easy, state two, since we have an isentropic turbine, uh, uh, turbine with an isentropic efficiency, we're going to compute first state 2s. And this state 2s, we need pressure 2 equals pressure ratio times P1. And our second property will be that S1 equals S2. And with this, we're going to get H2s. To get the state to actual, we know that uh, with the definition of efficiency of the compressor, we, we have only one unknown, so this is what we get, H2A, we know uh, this efficiency we know the rest of the variable so we solve for h2a and we know pressure 2 so we can get uh, s2 actual and t2 actual we're gonna get everything in order to plot the properties um, so for state 3 We know P2 equals P3, we don't have pressure drop. And we know that delta T of the recuperator, of the regenerator, will be the uh, high temperature, T7 minus T3. So solving for T3. At this point, we don't know T7, t, t uh, seven, but we are going to will. We will not know it. So, um, when we solve this, we initially are going to guess a number just to make sure that we can solve it. But uh, we need to find out T7, which we're going to find it at the end. And that's why we are going to use is because is will do this iteration for us. If, if we don't do it this way, we can start with uh, guess T7, solve everything, and then go back. But is will do that for us. So once that we know T, uh, T7, we can know T3, 
so from there we can get h3 and s3 now to get state 4 we know that uh, We know P3 equals P4, and we know T4. We know that T4 is uh, 1020, right? So we have our two properties. We can get H4 and S4. But uh, we don't know the mass of field that we are burning. So let's uh, have a small diagram here just of this part. We have our few of mass of few of the heater, and we have air. And we burn it. I doubt it. We're gonna have the mass of air plus the mass of fuel that we're gonna treat it as air, remember, times H4. So if we do our first law analysis, we don't have any work in or any Q in or Q out. So we can uh, say that this analysis will be mass flow rate of air times H3 plus the heating value of the fuel time mass of the fuel in the heater equal mass of air plus mass of fuel in the heater times H4. So you know that the, you, you notice that this first law is just the first law for this uh, system. Uh, if we divide everything by mass fuel of air, we'll have H3 plus HC. Mass fuel over mass of the air is the inverse of the air fuel ratio uh, of the heater. Equals 1 plus, again, the inverse of air fuel ratio of the heater times H4. So since we know H3, we know H4, we know HC, we can solve for this. So, again, recall that we don't know, H, we don't know T7, so we will need to uh, uh, guess this one, solve it forward, and then review the delta T that we have in the regenerator, if it's not... 50, we need to come back and guess a new value of uh, T7. But since we're going to do it with ease, we can save that point. So, we are okay until here. We are going to analyze now the turbine. We're going to need more space, so we're going to go to the next page. And for the turbine, we're going to define the state five S first because we have an isentropic efficiency. So we know that P five equals what? We don't know. But we know that this P five should be in a fashion that uh, have the same produce the exact same power that the compressor needs so we need to guess so you can see now the advantage of using is 
if we are not using is we will need to guess this one solve forward if it doesn't match the value the, 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 the amount of power that the compressor is giving we need to solve for uh, again I guess a new value of pressure 5 once that we have that match and match temperature we can consider that our problem solved but is will do that for us so we're gonna guess uh, this value initially and just for uh, the implementation our first guess will be P5 equals uh, P2 P1 plus P2 over 2 and again this is a guess so if you ask me um, how come you get that number you you can say okay this is the value that I guess but we can use a different value we can use the square root of P1 times P2 or we can use just any intermediate value we don't know but is we'll find out by iteration so that's our first property our second property is uh, S5 equals S4. So with these two properties, we can get H5S. Okay. Once that we have H5S, we can get state, state 5 actual. So we know the definition of our turbine, the isotropic definition of the turbine, and will be H4 minus H4 actual minus H4, sorry, this is 5, minus H5 isentropic. So we know this value, we know H4, so we can solve for H4 actual, H5 actual, and well, we know P5. We don't know it, we guess it, but in order to find out H5A, we're going to use that value. So with these two properties, we get uh, S5 actual and T5 actual. So we need to find out a pressure that uh, makes this True. And we're going to find this value for the guess value of T7. We keep solving. So now we are going to um, analyze the second heat exchanger. Similar to what we did here, we're going to uh, do a small diagram. But first, we're going to recognize that state 6. It's already fine because p5 equals p6 whatever the value of p6 of p5 is and t6 is equal to 120 degrees celsius so from here we can get uh, h6 and s6 so we're gonna so we're gonna draw for a small diagram we know that we have fuel in the reheater and we have uh, H5 but with H5 we don't only have air we have mass of air plus the mass of fuel in the heater so at the exit we're gonna have mass of air plus mass of fuel in the heater plus mass of fuel in the reheater times H6 so if we do our first law analysis we know that we recognize that we don't have any work done and we don't have any heat transfer everything is happening inside so the balance will tell us um, mass of air 
plus mass of fuel in the heater times H5 plus sorry I'm going one step ahead plus the mass fuel rate of the reheater times the heating value this is equal to everything that goes out of the reheater the mass of air plus mass of fuel in the heater plus mass of fuel in the reheater times 6 since we know state 6 we know state 5 we know these two values we know HC so we're going to divide by mass flow rate of air we recognize that mass flow rate of fuel times uh, divided by mass of rate of fuel divided by mass of rate of air is the inverse of mass flow of air divided by mass of fuel so this is the same as one over airflow rate so we have 1 plus 1 over airflow rate of the heater times H5 plus uh, HC divided by airflow rate this time of the reheater equals 1 plus this will give me 1 over airflow rate of the heater plus 1 over airflow rate of the reheater which comes from this times h6 so we need we, for this we solve for airflow rate of the reheater is with is going to be doing this for us So, at this point of time, the problem, you should recognize that we can do the analysis of our turbine, okay? So if we do the first law analysis, First law on a power turbine. We can see that we have um, we have um, no heat going in or going out. Oh, sorry. We first uh, need to find out. H state seven. And since we have an isentropic efficiency, we're gonna have that P seven it's equal to P atmosphere, that means P A P one. We know that from the um, text because we we know that we don't have any pressure drop. This set of the atmosphere means that P8 equal P1. And since we don't have pressure along the line, we know that this pressure is the same. And we don't have any pressure drop in the heat exchanger. So we know P7. And we know S7 equals S6. So we can get HTS. For state actual, state 7 actual, we know P7, but we also know the, the, the definition of isentropic efficiency for the power turbine will be H6 minus H7 actual, 
H6 minus H7S. The only unknown is H7. And my second property, of course, will be the pressure. So from here we can get S7 actual and T7 actual. So we have now all that we need to perform the first law analysis. We recognize that we don't have any heat in or heat out. We have work out. So we have minus work of the power turbine. Um, then we have the mass flow rate. The mass flow rate that goes in and out is the same. So we're going to have plus mass flow rate of air times 1 plus 1 over a f heater plus 1 over air flow reheater times h6 minus h7a and this will be equal to zero because it's a steady state but we know this value we know that this value is 300 and 20 HP so we can solve for a mass flow ratio of air yes we'll do it okay finally we need to solve the regenerator we know state 8 is pressure 8 equals to pressure 1 but we don't know T8 so we need a second property and that second property will come from our first law analysis of the regenerator we are gonna uh, draw our system We have state 2, state 3, state 7, and state 8. So what goes in is mass flow of air here, mass flow of air here, but in here we have the mass flow rate of air plus the mass flow of each of the uh, fuels. So we have mass flow air plus mass flow of fuel in the heater plus mass flow fuel in the heater and the same is outside so if I do a first law analysis we divide everything by the um, T7 we, we know it now because we get it from here but this T7 should be equal to the T7 that we guess. If not, we need to guess again. Is will do that for us. So the other thing that we need to do, uh, once that we get to this point, the system will be closed. So is can iterate until we have everything. So if we solve, uh, we do the energy balance in our generator, we're gonna have uh, H1, I mean H2 plus um, 1 plus 1 over H F in the heater plus 1 over H A F of the reheater times H7 equals uh, H3 plus 1 plus 1 of A F of the heater plus 1 over F of the reheater times H8. The only unknown will be H8 and for state 8 if we know this H8 we can get T8 and S8 and this closes our problem. So in the following video we are gonna uh, see how to implement this in ease. In order to make it a little bit easier, we are going to uh, have 
all the problems solved and we're gonna discuss each part and bring to here okay guys thank you I hope that um, you uh, understand this just to recap what is is gonna do we're gonna guess t7 at the beginning just to show that uh, we can solve it and then once that we solve the turbine we know t7 the second turbine and go back and visit if our guess was correct if not we update it and we can keep doing that and is was going to solve once again that burden from us okay guys thank you